Good morning, Chaplain Ron here. We're going to Acts chapter 2, beginning with verse 14. And here, um, this is where now Peter, remember, he has taken on this role. And Jesus said in Matthew 16, because Peter was the first one um, to pronounce Jesus as the one who was the Messiah, um, that then Jesus said, okay, well, um, upon confessions like this, I'm going to build this church. I'm going to build my kingdom, the called out ones. And so Peter is this particular person whom God has worked in his heart to see who Jesus is. But yet we can't dismiss Peter um, having difficulty in dying to self, not wanting Peter, his friend, to suffer. And not wanting Jesus, his friend, to suffer. And Jesus tells him, well, that's a satanic position. Um, it's not a biblical position. And, and then um, Peter now is addressing this particular crowd. So this is what he says. Peter stood up with the 11, even though now they have 12. Um, they're referred to as the 11. Now, notice that Luke is interested in these details um, as th then he says about there is Peter stood up with the 11, which is kind of a term for the apostles, but there are 11 others besides him, so we could look at it that way. He raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who are in Jerusalem, now, if they've understood different languages, certainly God would give the understanding of what these Galileans are saying, and they would understand them in their own language, even if they are from Libya, Cappadocia, even if they are Arabs, or even if they are Persians. He said, fellow Jews, all of you who are here in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men aren't drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. And this is from Joel 2, 28 to 32. Again, they've gone through scripture to pull this out, um, to show God's uh, word is alive and active. Um, cuts like a double-edged sword, as the Bible says in New Testament. Verse 17 of Acts 2. In the last days, God says, I'll pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I'll pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon become as blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So we got some of this um, in the book of Revelation when it talks about um, uh, before the Lord's return, these uh, things that happened in the heavens and cataclysmic things that will happen. But as God says, in the last days, the last days began when Jesus then went up into the heavens, when he ascended into heaven. And the last day then ends when he returns back to earth. That's what's referred to as the last day. So we are in that particular segment of time. So what do we have here? Well, we have where there are those who are prophesying, remember the Bible is not yet complete, and so there are revelations that God gives in this particular way. And then there are going to be those who have dreams and visions. John had one uh, significantly, the book of Revelation, others. Um, uh, so there, there are, um, Peter had his dream, remember, when Cornelius and his household about um, Gentiles coming to faith and the Holy Spirit being given to them. So this is so important then to realize, as he continues, men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, 
was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I won't be shaken. Therefore, my heart's glad and my tongue rejoices. My body will also live in hope because you won't abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One undergo decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You'll fill me with joy in your presence. These are messianic passages from Psalm 16, verses 8 through 11, about the person of Jesus. You know, you'll never let your Holy One see decay. Well, Jesus' body didn't decay like ours decays <clears throat> because um, he resurrected from the dead before it would do that. So um, there is um, the way that, um, again, Scripture is being used in order to show God's truth and how he is working. Um, and it was God's set purpose, as in verse 23, that Jesus would die in this particular way. Because remember, he's talking to these Jewish people here for this celebration of the giving of the law, that now um, Jesus of Nazareth is the one whom God gave the ability you know, to show that he was his son by the miracles that he did. And then, according to God's plan and providence, he was arrested and put to death. And how wonderful it is um, for then to go through the scriptures to back it up um, with, these, with this text from Psalm 16. Jesus did not decay in a grave. He resurrected from the dead. That's a celebration for you and me to have. It's a celebration that we see the presence of God at work. And that's where there's victory for you and me in the mundane problems that we have and looking for hope and a future. You know, this text says, <laughs> as we look back at verse 17, um, your old men are going to dream dreams. It's great to think about life eternally. Even though this life is but a breath, eternal life is eternal. How, how do we understand that? Got a handle on it. But the point is this: is that life does not end just because there's a an age attached to it, or there becomes a an illness or weakness or in our bodies and minds. The fact is, is that God is working His purposes, restores us. But he also works to show his power and his glory in those who trust in him. And that's where we have hope in the future based on his promises that he gives us in his words. Let's pray. Lord, give us encouragement in this particular day and time. Help us to look at life in the future not as a dread, but with opportunities. What is it that you would do to work in us? Ways of speech, ways of attitude, in order to show you. And we thank you for it in Christ's name. Amen.